Okay, I suggest we start uh, the session. Um, <clears throat> welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexey Vasilenko, and I'm hosting um, today's uh, third uh, migration uh, session. We did already two um, in previous uh, weeks slash month. Um, so updated a couple of things on the slides. Meanwhile, um, Q and A uh, and others are uh, what we are going to present uh, today. Um, together with me, I have uh, Akshay, uh, who is one of our account uh, managers, and uh, Sergey, who is uh, one of my senior uh, technicians, um, doing a deep dive into the migration activities, um, created the videos uh, we are going to share. Alex, you get muted for any reasons. Who did this? <laughs> Thanks for uh, uh, telling me. Um, so let's uh, let me start again for, uh, with the agenda. So um, it will be an introduction. Uh, we are showing the why and what uh, we are doing here about the migration. Uh, we are going uh, through uh, a walkthrough um, of the required changes. Uh, we have uh, prepared uh, demo videos uh, for every important uh, step for the basic uh, migration. So it's not completely covering every little configuration uh, thing uh, you may have in your deployment, but at least the basics um, to, to get you uh, through the minimum required uh, changes uh, for the cloud only and for the hybrid scenarios. We will have a Q&A um, at the end, uh, but uh, you can raise any questions um, through the meeting, um, through the session, um, into the chat. Um, at the end, uh, when we are coming to this Q&A part, we will go through those questions and answer those. Um, we will also um, put um, those questions questions um, and answers um, into the um, community where uh, we have done it uh, already in the past as well. So you will find those um, infos um, in, in the community. The recording of this uh, session or the video will be also placed on the uh, migration uh, uh, website. Um, so um, it will be updated. The uh, old one will be replaced by uh, one of the new sessions uh, we, we did uh, today. And um, at the end, uh, just a quick reference uh, to the important uh, resources and URLs. Um, I will also um, get those added uh, into the migration um, documents so that um, they are available and are present um, once once anyone is um, going through this migration um, and, and, and the article. So now coming to the introduction and the why and what details. Um, so I'll just quickly a reminder on the deadline. Uh, so it's the 31st December um, of this year. Um, time passed by so quickly. So we are uh, pretty close to this deadline. Uh, means uh, if you have not taken uh, any action um, as of now, um, it is definitely uh, the right time to do so. Um, the, the key change and the key um, retirement um, we are aiming um, on the 31st December is um, EPO Cloud Retirement. So McAfee EPO Cloud and Vision EPO Cloud, um, however it was called, or you know it um, uh, from, from the naming perspective. Um, so the importance is like um, if you're using login.mcafee.com slash v1, um, so this is the old uh, legacy infrastructure, this will retire. Um, in the interim, um, we will uh, use on the new platform, so for SSE as well as for Trellix, the AuthUI McAfee.com uh, uh, domain. Um, originally, uh, we wanted to uh, get this uh, replaced already on uh, 12th December, um, but this has been postponed um, to the 7th January of uh, next year. Uh, KB um, information um, is given as reference, uh, article number 96089. Um, so, uh, but uh, this is just just a, a URL for the new infrastructure. The entirement or the yeah. retirement of the EPO cloud will continue. So uh, this this uh, will stop working. Um, within this change, we are asking customers as well uh, to replace re legacy proxy domains. So mcafeecloud.com and sasprotection.com as the uh, proxy domains uh, to be replaced by uh, the skyhigh.cloud uh, domain. So it could be WGCS um, or hybrid, uh, depends on your setup. This is not the um, 
most important change because it will remain working. So we have seen a couple of questions flying around um, um, every, every now and then. Um, if So people are afraid things will stop. This, this will still continue to work. So we will have covered this as a question as well later on, but just wanted to call this out um, in, in this slide as well. So the, the real important uh, change is EPO cloud retirement. So the user interface, the management interface will retire and you have to uh, migrate your stuff um, as soon as possible into the new environment so that you don't lose um, the administrative capabilities. Um, this migration, um, included or was only applied on uh, active entitlements. So if you have any trial tenant or anything what got expired uh, uh, shortly before this migration, uh, these accounts have not been touched. So it means um, in worst case, um, if for whatever reason you are maintaining an expired tenant uh, productive, um, this was not migrated and um, means you will face issues if you try to log in on the new environment. In this case, uh, please reach out uh, to your CSM um, or support so that we uh, will review and um, uh, get this uh, expired ones uh, enabled so that you will able to uh, migrate. Um, the client administration um, itself from a future perspective uh, needs to be done on the uh, new SSE platform or the uh, Trellix uh, EPO um, or any third party management uh, tools. Um, it's it's not restricted um, to, to those uh, management uh, tools. The walkthrough demo uh, includes a set uh, a cloud only uh, deployment. So we are covering the SSE platform as well as the uh, Trellix EPO um, to give you uh, videos uh, where to configure what. Um, this means um, it's, it's covering the scenario where you do manage your web policy via the cloud environment. Uh, the second uh, part is the uh, hybrid um, environment where you have your web policy managed uh, via an on-prem uh, web gateway or um, in a mixed mode um, using the cloud as well as an on-prem gateway. Um, in both scenarios, the client management um, could be cloud or on-prem, so it doesn't matter. It's more like where you administrate the web policy uh, and not uh, the clients. This is the, the key um, difference here. So now let's start with the uh, walkthrough sessions showing you the configuration videos. Um, every, uh, I mean, every scenario includes a quick introduction uh, video so that you know about um, the uh, scenario uh, and the deployment, what are the, the key items to identify if this is something you have in place or uh, uh, maybe it's it's not and it's just an informational uh, aspect for you and then uh, you may need to listen to the hybrid one um, as for example. So now let's look into the introduction. This is a short introduction to cloud-only setup. What does it mean to have cloud-only setup? Cloud-only setup means that you manage your web policy in the cloud. You don't have any on-premise devices synchronize this policy. So you go to Sky Security Cloud, open your web policy, and define your rule sets. These rule sets will not be imported during the migration phase. You will have to reconfigure your policy from scratch. Um, however, I will give you some options to import lists uh, so you don't have to type them or define the list from scratch. Well, let's get to the points to verify your custom ID. Um, important note, if you notice a discrepancy uh, while you verify the customer ID um, on the new and the, the old environment, um, don't continue any action items of the migration, uh, reach out to support so we can identify what failed and get this corrected. To verify your customer ID, go to the settings, infrastructure, client proxy management, Select global configuration, tenant authentication, and verify the customer ID is matching your customer ID you had previously. 
another second to verify your data. To verify your data is available in Sky Security Cloud. Check dashboards, web dashboard. Appearance of data in web dashboard confirms the data is available for past seven days, at least as shown in the statistics, last seven days of data. Access logs are available under analytics web web traffic, showing as well by default seven days of last access log. Now let's look into the data residency settings. By default, all data is stored in North America. Please review your Trellix CPO settings and match your Sky Security Cloud settings accordingly to your preference. Select Infrastructure, Web Gateway, Setup, Scroll down to the log data residency and adjust to your preference. Save your configuration and publish to the cloud. Now let's look into the SCP configuration. Um, this video includes one of the very uh, important steps you have to do um, to be in a successful migration state. Um, we will also touch point this information later in the Q&A part. So uh, let's look into uh, the steps now. Updating MCP configuration, we have to go to infrastructure, client proxy management, global configuration, dent of indication. Here we can see this shared secret, which is grayed out. And what we need to do is make sure that the same shared secret, which is used either on your on-prem EPO or on the previous configuration is matching our new Sky Security Cloud proxies. I will take a sample by exporting credentials. Open the same here. And take another sample from the previous EPO. Therefore, I'm going to use my cloud EPO. It will be similar to your on-premise EPO. Let me open this up. Here I would go to the policy catalog. Use McAfee Climb Proxy and choose any of uh, your existing policies. I do have a desk policy, I will just use that one. Here we go to Client Configuration and Export Customer Credentials. To export password, we have to go uh, Saving Link As, Export Password, we can open the same up to confirm. Here you will be able to see difference between the previous exported and the current. This is from the Sky Security Cloud, and this is from the previous one. If you recognize, here is the customer ID and it's been the same here, or should be the same here. So I do not have it migrated, so it's not the same for me. However, the difference is this line. We have to modify and add this line into our current exported password to make it compatible to the new service. You can use any editor of your preference. I use Notepad++ for that. 
near to the end before the MCP credentials, I add this line, keep domain name true, closing it and save. So now this file will be changed to keep domain name equals true. The same is here, the only difference, yeah, I do have a different customer ID here. So I will be able to import the new file, edited file to my cloud proxies. Therefore, I would go back to my configuration, choose import credentials, Choose the XML file, I just added it. And would be able to import if I would have the same customer ID. So this is just a sample I used without a migra uh, migrated account. Uh, in, in any other case, it should not throw you this error message. To finalize this one, you will have to publish the policy after that. It will show you on the pop-up on the top. Now let's go to the policy uh, import. For cloud only users, if you want to regrade your MCP policy, you have to go through infrastructure, client proxy management, configure policies. I do have already one created here. Uh, what we will do is import policy. Therefore, I will choose my uh, current MCP policy from policy catalog, MCP client proxy, select the policy I want to export. Click on action, export policy to file and choose client file. This will generate a file and save in OPG format. Okay, let's go back, import policy, choose OPG file, you will recognize proxy server list is being added, there's additional uh, servers being added, you might need to verify that the correct proxy is selected, therefore Use um, the name of your policy you have imported. Verify which server is selected, which is alternative server you have selected here, and verify you're using correct domain. From server here, you see it's having McAfee inside. We want to um, make it obsolete, so you have to replace this with Sky High Cloud. and save. Don't forget to publish this one so that the cloud become aware of your new policy if it's assigned to any user. The same combination of username and password is being known to the cloud. At the end, let's look into import lists. As next, we would uh, have a look into import list content from EPO Cloud to uh, Sky High Security Cloud. Uh, from here, you're able to use a menu, policy, go to web policy. You won't be able to export a full policy or migrate this policy, unfortunately. What you can do is, uh, for example, select whitelist or any kind of block list like uh, global block list. Um, you can navigate uh, from the web policy to any list on the right, export those lists and import to your Sky High Security Cloud policy. For example, I will take global URL whitelist and simply download this, export, file is downloaded, 
I'll go ahead and uh, use Excel to modify and remove unnecessary columns. Open an empty uh, Excel book and use data from TXT CSV file. load and simply remove the second row. Save file again. Now log in again to your Sky Security Cloud proxy. Uh, go to policy, web policy, policy. You navigate to the similar rule like global bypass, which will use the uh, domain bypass, the general whitelist. You can select and say edit list. From the action button, import a pan, so we'll just add on the button. Okay, we have a preview, so we'll add those two lines. It's comma separated, it's fine. We'll say import. Click to save the configuration. Publish it. And we're ready to go. All right, these have been the steps <clears throat> for the cloud only scenario on SSE. Now let's take a look um, on the cloud only um, on the Trilex CPO side of things, starting with the introduction of this scenario first. For customer who after renewal receive Trilex CPO managing their clients from cloud, all of those clients will receive Trilex CPO button here. No clients will be migrated from previous EPO to this Trilix EPO. So you will have to unregister those clients from um, WGCS, which you have used previously, and register them into this Trilix EPO. Policy can be migrated, and I will come to this later. Let's look into how to import the SAP credentials. Customers with Trilix CPO will have to take additional step in order to import NCP credentials into the Trilix CPO. As we have already reviewed Sky Security Cloud uh, import for NCP credentials, we will go ahead with Trilix CPO import. This is the required step to match uh, the credentials to the Sky Security Cloud. Click on Menu. Under configuration, you will find MCP administration. Here, simply choose your file that you have modified previously and upload. Click on OK. That's it. Well, let's take a look on to how export the SAP policy. See from EPO Cloud or on-prem EPO. Go to policy catalog, select McAfee client proxy, choose the policy you want to export and click export link next to the name. Use right mouse button, save link as, you can choose uh, your preferred name, we just keep it as it is. Click on save and download the file. I will show you how to import the SAP policy. Importing MCP policy to Trilix CPO will have to modify a file first. So we'll go to Trilix CPO, select policy catalog, choose again. McAfee Client Proxy, click on Edit, say Export. 
Okay, I want to save the same file here as well to modify it later on. I will use uh, Notepad++ as an editor and show you a sample here, how this looks like. This is a sample file we just have exported. And this will be the test file, test policy that we have exported from uh, WGCS EPO Cloud. So we are especially looking for feature ID and uh, server ID. Feature ID. copy the value and modify the values here. Continue on Notepad++. Look for the same values. Feature ID, which needs to be replaced. The value from Trilux CPO. Here we go. Save it and then go ahead to our EPO back and looking for server ID. Server ID a correct value and the server ID from the previous one. So let's change this. And save. Once we have modified this file, we're going to upload it to Trilix CPO. Let's go back to policy catalog. Look at the client proxy. Import. Choose the file we just have modified. Click on OK. So now you can also assign test policy to your clients. At the end, let's look into update your SCP policy. For cloud-only users, if you want to regrade your MCP policy, you have to go through infrastructure, client proxy management, configure policies. I do have already one created here. Uh, what we will do is import policy. Therefore, I will choose my uh, current MCP policy from policy catalog, MCP client proxy, select the policy I want to export. Click on action, export policy to file and choose client file. This will generate a file and save in OPG format. Okay, let's go back, import policy, choose OPG file, you will recognize proxy server list is being added, there's additional uh, servers being added, you might need to verify that the correct proxy is selected, therefore Use um, the name of your policy you have imported to verify which server is selected, which is alternative server you have selected here, and verify you're using correct domain. From server here, you see it's having McAfee inside. We want to um, make it obsolete, so you have to replace this with Sky High Cloud.
and safe. Don't forget to publish this one so that the cloud become aware of your new policy if it's assigned to any user. The same combination of username and password is being known to the cloud. All right, this was the uh, overview of steps um, regards to Trellix EPO. Now let's go to the next scenario um, in a hybrid mode, starting with the introduction of this deployment. For customers with hybrid setup who don't want to manage the policy in the cloud, will not have access to web policy, which means this part of the menu of policy will not be shown. You will not be able to access web policy policy. Uh, however, you will receive the information if your policy is synchronized on top. I don't have this option, so I cannot show you in this demo session. You will recognize um, information banner if your policy is synchronized. The verify custom ID, verify data, data residency settings um, are exactly the same as we have seen in the first um, introduction uh, videos. So we are skipping those and um, moving um, towards the um, SCP um, configuration items, starting with the SCP configuration. Updating MCP configuration, we have to go to infrastructure, client proxy management. Global configuration, DENT authentication. Here we can see this shared secret, which is grayed out. And what we need to do is make sure that the same shared secret, which is used either on your on-prem EPO or on the previous configuration is matching our new Sky Eye Security cloud proxies. I will take a sample by exporting credentials. Open the same here. and take another sample from the previous EPO. Therefore, I'm going to use my cloud EPO. It will be similar to your on-premise EPO. Let me open this up. Here I would go to the policy catalog, use McAfee client proxy, and choose any of uh, your existing policies. I do have a desk policy, I will just use that one. Here we go to client configuration and export customer credentials. To export password, we have to go uh, saving link as export password. We can open the same up to confirm. Here you will be able to see difference between the previous exported and the current. This is from the Sky Security Cloud, and this is from the previous one. If you recognize, here is the customer ID, and it's been the same here. Should be the same here, so I do not have it migrated, so it's not the same for me. However, the difference is this line. We have to modify and add this line into our current exported password to make it compatible to the new service. You can use any editor of your preference. I use Notepad Plus Plus for that. Near to the end, before the MCP credentials, I add this line, keep domain name true, closing it and save. So now this file will be changed to keep domain name equals true. The same is here, the only difference, yeah, 
I do have a different customer ID here. So I will be able to import the new file, edited file, to my cloud proxies. Therefore, I would go back to my configuration, choose import credentials, choose the XML file I just added, and would be able to import if I would have the same customer ID. So this is just a sample I used without a migra uh, migrated account. Uh, in, in any other case, it should not throw you this error message. To finalize this one, you will have to publish the policy after that. It will show you a pop-up on the top. Now let's look into the SCP policy import steps. For our hybrid users that require to redirect their clients directly to hybrid policy, you can import policy from your previous EPO. It does not matter if you use WGCS, the uh, EPO cloud, or if you use on-prem EPO. I will show you a sample and what to modify and um, what you should keep in mind. Go to infrastructure, Client proxy management. Configure policies, and we want to import the policy. So I will switch over to my cloud EPO, or you can also use your local EPO just to import OPG file. Select policy catalog, client proxy, policy of your preference. Click on action and export policy file. Use in that case client file to receive OPG file. OPG file is downloaded. I will use now this file to import into configuration policies, import policy. I just have selected policy file we exported previously and now I want you to verify primary server I have selected. It's called main proxy server item and alternative server, if you have any. Go to those items here, verify the domain is set correctly. I will go ahead and modify this domain to hybrid.skyhigh.cloud. This is required to send clients directly to your hybrid policy, which is synchronized from the MWG to the cloud. Same for proxy server. Verify this has been saved. No, nope, because I didn't click on proceed. Click on save. Verify has taken. Correct. This policy, right objects are selected. Publish this policy to the cloud. and deploy OPG file. If you manage your policy through an EPO on-prem, you have to modify this information on your on-prem device. Keep in mind that you also update shared secret that you have selected. At this point, you can export this information in order to import to your EPO on-prem. This have to match, otherwise the client will not receive access to the cloud. At the end, let's look to the hybrid sync settings. To the web gateway configuration and synchronization status. 
from configuration perspective, we highly recommend to modify destination domain under configuration web hybrid. Uh, we have already updated our article with the number 87232 with the new domain names. I will simply copy the domain name and update this in the configuration of MWG. So the new domain name will be policysyncskyhigh.cloud. Save this configuration, go to troubleshooting, select synchronization and I press sync button to trigger synchronization, wait until it's completed, verify policy synchronization successfully performed, switch to our cloud UI. If you have cloud only, web policy will not be available. You can simply go for dashboard, web dashboard, and check the message on the top. It's saying the time and the name of the appliance the synchronization was done from. For users that have hybrid or mixed mode, You can add from the library by clicking on show another rule set with the name hybrid policy. I have it already added to my policy, so I won't have this in the list. By selecting the rule set, hybrid policy routing, you will find the same information on the right. Additionally, you can decide either you want to apply cloud policy, you want to have um, on-premise policy applied, or if you have a specific locations, user groups or users as in the criteria, you want to apply on-premise policy too. All right, this was uh, the overview of the hybrid scenario as well. So um, now we are going into the uh, Q&A part. We are going through a couple of uh, collected uh, um, questions and answers um, before we are um, jumping on the questions uh, from the chat. Um, the first one is like uh, how to verify uh, if you are successfully migrated. So at, at the end, uh, the successful migration um, is related to the two key changes um, we have shown already in, in, in the videos. Uh, first is um, the shared secret or called uh, credentials um, update. So um, export um, your SAP credentials from the uh, EPO cloud, import it on a new environment because um, this is the uh, key authenticator um, towards old or new environment. So um, if it's not matching, um, so you don't have um, the uh, SCP credentials you are using um, in your SCP policy on the new environment, the authentication will fail and um, you will be treated and seen from our end as well um, in the logs um, using the old infrastructure, old environment and are not successfully migrated. The second part of it is um, to update other domains, also the proxy domains, hybrid sync, uh, reporting API, everything what has reference to the old uh, McAfee uh, cloud or uh, SaaS protection uh, domain. <clears throat> Um, if you want or need a verification confirmation, if you say, hey, um, I did all the steps, uh, please let me know um, if I'm good and uh, uh, successful um, in, in, in the stuff I did from the migration, um, please reach out uh, to your customer success manager um, or support. Uh, we can look into uh, the tenant um, uh, from a back end and uh, uh, verify that uh, the traffic we see is routed and authenticated against uh, the new environment. If not, uh, we can uh, review together with you once again, the configuration steps um, of the migration uh, to verify what was missed. If I'm using on-prem EPO, so not the cloud EPO to administrate, have my SCP policy, my on-prem MWG, I'm to sync the policy, do I need to take any actions? Um, 
we have shown it um, in, in, in the video as well a little bit or touched a little bit, um, but just to clarify, uh, yes, even in this scenario, you have to update and take um, some action items. At least, um, as said, uh, update the uh, domain names um, and the shared secret um, item so that you will be authenticated properly and every uh, thing in the policy is pointing to the new environment. Uh, will my policy be migrated um, or can I import export um, the, the stuff? Um, not fully, so the web policy needs to be recreated. Uh, lists can be imported um, as, as shown. Um, what should I do if my login on the uh, new uh, domain or the new authentication uh, login URL is not working? <laughs> So still here you see the uh, auth UI McAfee.com, which is the placeholder uh, till mid of uh, January next year. So if you have any problems on the login, please verify first the login ID. If the account name is correct, the email ID used um, in Cloud EPO is the right one, um, is an admin account. Um, and uh, if needed, uh, try to reset the password. Verify that it's not a, any kind of expired um, uh, account you may have used accidentally because uh, only uh, active ones have migrated right so just verify the basics um if uh, you think everything is correct and still X is not working, contact support, let us know your tenant ID and uh, the admin account you have access issues with and we will review and uh, take corrective actions. What about reporting? Um, am I impacted? Do I need to take changes on the import uh, on the reporting side of things? So we've shown um, in the videos as well that the data uh, will not uh, be lost, so uh, it will be uh, remained. Uh, you will see the uh, information. If not, um, obviously uh, raise support tickets, so we will review. Um, the reporting uh, API um, URLs are available on the uh, given KB with the number 87232. On content security reporter and login client, there are minor changes uh, you may need to, to do or at least review um, to, to match the uh, data residency settings. So in the uh, CSR log source, um, you have the uh, UCE X values in the region field. So the X stands then for NA, EMEA, or any other uh, available uh, region. Um, review and change or adjust to match the uh, data residency settings um, you have uh, defined in the cloud um, settings. Similar is given in login client. Um, if you uh, look into uh, the UCE, uh, settings, um, there's also um, the, the option uh, to select um, the, the region uh, properly uh, to match um, in the cloud settings um, set in the data residency. If uh, any admin accounts are missing, uh, what should I do? Um, you can yourself create or recreate any admin accounts um, what was missed for whatever reason, um, but at least uh, you need yourself uh, to do a login or log in yourself as an administrative account. So um, sometimes um, it's it's not the uh, admin uh, or let's say the technician itself uh, who is maybe the main admin. Um, sometimes it was like a procurement uh, uh, mail ID. So cross check internally um, if you have the right uh, login. Um, if you need assistance, as already mentioned um, on the previous uh, slide, um, with the login problems, uh, reach out to support so we can investigate and uh, cross-check um, your tenant and uh, login information. So what will happen exactly if I'm not migrated uh, till deadline? So we have announced um, the, the key items you're losing in the SNS. Um, so just a reference ID. Um, you can also access um, previous sent SNS um, in the support portal. Um, there, there is a um, section where you can uh, look historical SNS messages. So if you're not migrating uh, until the deadline of uh, 31st December, the key um, 
functionalities you all lose are the management access. Um, so functions like uh, changing admin logins, um, setting uh, the uh, shared secrets, um, or updating your uh, SCP uh, uh, versions or policies, dashboard and report access is not working anymore um, if you have uh, not taken any actions and still rely on the EPO cloud and uh, not moved uh, to the new environment uh, um, called SSE platform or uh, Trellix uh, part of things. However, the user traffic itself will remain functional with the last synchronized uh, configuration uh, policy. So it means um, if even if you haven't uh, changed the proxy domains, no one will stop getting access uh, to the internet. So this will completely uh, continue function. So however, we are engaging and encourage a uh, customer uh, to update uh, the uh, domains, the proxy domains, because um, you've seen how fast the time passed by. So originally we have already uh, announced uh, the migration a year back and um, well, uh, not everyone uh, uh, took action. So that's, that's where we have started to push um, mid end of this year um, to get this done. So the, we don't want you to run out of time if at some point uh, in the next year, we have to cut off um, the the usage of this old proxy domains so that you're also running out of time. So that, that's why we have uh, announced this also already enough, uh, early enough um, to get everyone uh, to, to update um, those uh, proxy domains. What about control console? Um, so, um, for, for those um, who doesn't know what the control console is, that's the legacy legacy administrative uh, item or console. Um, so this was used uh, before uh, EPO Cloud. So um, means those who are still using control console missed all the first uh, migration we did um, like in 2017 or 18, um, where we did the migration from control console to EPO cloud. Uh, the good thing is um, at this point of time, uh, the main change you need to do is uh, update your uh, bookmarks uh, for the uh, configuration URL. Um, so instead using the McAfeeSaaS.com uh, domain, it's now all on the MX Logic domain. Um, as already mentioned before, we still want you as well uh, to update uh, the uh, proxy domains um, sooner or later, better sooner, of course. So this was the um, pre-selected Q&A. Um, so just uh, um, giving the important resources URLs. I said uh, already at the beginning, um, I will work with the team to get the uh, uh, community thread link, um, the uh, IP FKDN KB, as well as the SNS reference into the migration guide as well. So uh, you don't need to search for it. Um, it's available when you are looking into the migration guide itself. So this was the uh, session um, presenting you uh, the information. Now let's get into the uh, Q&A, uh, looking into the chat. Um, this is where I will pass over to Sergey. Um, I think he already uh, answered a couple of uh, uh, questions in the chat. If you maybe can um, read the questions we had and then uh, deliver the answer. Uh, yeah, we have most likely the confusion about the <clears throat> the look of the console itself, where you missed like the Trillix CPU or the policy tab, uh, maybe not have access rights to. So keep, keep in mind, so if you don't have the product like Trillix CPU, you might not require those. If you have <clears throat> hybrid setup only, and you might not even used in the past any kind of features from the EPO. The only thing what you have used is maybe to set up a shared secret. And that's where the new console can, um, yeah, just simply skip this option. We, as you don't use it, don't need it, you can set up a uh, shared secret in a different way. And if you don't manage any kind of clients, there's no reason to have it. And if you need additional subscription like the Trellix, if you want to manage the users, and we might have missed that, uh, contact us, we can clarify what is missing. Usually if you have registered users, there will be different subscriptions so that you will receive the EPO as far as I know. However, for those who miss the policy tab, it's just the reason that we um, don't need to manage the policy in the cloud. It's only for, uh, for those web users where you have to create a code uh, policy in the cloud where you not have any synchronization from SWG 
and is uh, simply to uh, manage the policy in in the cloud itself. So that's that's where you see the policy tab. OK, so what do we have else? Uh, reporting ability. Yeah, the reporting is possible on the new platform too. You can create reports, you can schedule them even without having the EPO part. It's coming from the sky high par, uh, part of the product and uh, you have just to figure out if this is enough for you or if you still want to have like some adjustable uh, columns, maybe some specific reports you can't uh, do in the cloud, then you might still stick with the CSR. Uh, let me check what else. Uh, I noticed that our EP on-prem version that was leveraged to the demo did not have latest customer version. Yeah, I, I have tested this on the customer update 10, if you have seen somewhere that. Yeah, uh, the customer update 15 uh, includes the rebranding, that's correct. Yeah, the functionality, at least the MCP will stay the same. So it's it's no change. You just need to to have the latest version, MCP version that supports customer that is released, and uh, the CSR for the customer that 15 is released as well. You can find uh, release notes online. Uh, the video for the webinar is uh, at the last page of the presentation. We have all links to community where you can still raise questions that I continuously follow up on and answer those. There are also a couple of questions from previous session available where customers uh, have already raised those. Maybe uh, look for, for the answers or if it's not covered, so just raise another question. I will answer that. Um, the videos, the webinar is online. You can find as well on YouTube channel and we have this in the success.myshn.net. If you simply search for migration, you find these guides. I, I will also uh, send yeah. communication uh, to everyone who was invited to the session uh, once uh, the video uh, was updated. Um, so we will yeah. take uh, one of those new video uh, recordings uh, from the sessions we did uh, today um, and then update uh, on our uh, success web page. And uh, once this is done, I will send communication uh, to everyone who was invited. Yeah, there's another one. So sequence uh, what to, what you need to migrate. Yes, there's a simp simple simple um, introduction of migration, and on the bottom of the page, there's two uh, different paths to follow. One, if you have it on local EPO or if you have cloud only managed, click one of them and follow the step by step from top to bottom. That's uh, simply what you have to do. Hope this covers the question. Yeah, there's exactly a step by step. If you have like on-prem EPO, um, you go to the steps for the on-prem managed, or if you have everything in web, you go just the steps where it's saying you're just uh, web based only. Yeah, you can simply follow um, the uh, order um, as uh, shown in this video, right? So do the verification um, if uh, all um, is uh, available from a dashboard perspective, reporting perspective, entitlement perspective, uh, logins are available as needed. And then just um, go for the uh, shared secret uh, update so that um, it's included as well on the new infrastructure, on the new um, uh, an environment, and then uh, adjust your uh, policies. And um, at some point, um, if, if, you, if you see um, you created all the created all new policies um, covering your environment uh, from previous uh, uh, times, um, then you can uh, go live and let's say deploy those new policies um, to your clients um, to get it live. So we have still one or two minutes left, so um, as we have started a little bit later. Um, any further questions um, someone has, we we should um, look into. If not, then uh, thank you everyone for joining, raising questions um, in case of any problems 
questions uh, during the migration, reach out to your account or customer success manager or raise a support uh, uh, request as said. The recording will made available, communication will follow. Thanks everyone, enjoy your day and good luck for the migration. Thanks everyone.